Hello, I'm Paddy from creativemedia.org.uk. I've recently been put in charge of a workshop that has a Sieg SX1 micro mill. So I thought you might find it useful if I gave you some first impressions of this machine. I will say now I haven't used it very much, in fact hardly at all, but I think I've got some useful impressions of it all the same. Firstly, it arrived with the missing bolts in the whole motor assembly. So this, this whole section here was just wobbling around crazily. If, if I'd actually turned it on, it would have grated the um, cogs to shreds and would have broken horribly. So I had to send off for a new bolt for that. Thankfully, it's a fairly standard Allen key M series bolt, but that was annoying. I mean, if a company's not gonna check something as obvious as that before they send stuff out to paying customers, that is pretty poor. After doing that, I put a drill bit in. I kind of thought I'm going to drill a hole. And now it's finally working, I'm going to drill my first hole. I brought the drill down to the work, and as soon as the drill touched the work, the cogs disengaged, the motor spun around, but the drill bit was not moving at all. And I discovered that a bit called the gear fork, which holds one of the cogs where you can turn it from low gear to high gear, that was actually cracked. So great manufacturing quality there as well. It worries me a bit that I've got stuff that will crack inside a machine like this that I'm using for drilling and milling. I got a replacement, fitted it, quite easy to fix myself anyway. It's all you know, Allen keys and Phillips screws, so quite easy to fix. And then finally, the, the whole top part was wobbling around. And I found that there's an Allen key bolt which was loose, which you can tighten up slightly, which stops that wobble. But if you tighten it up properly tight, the whole vertical mechanism just locks in position. So I mean, obviously that's the way to lock the vertical position of the equipment. But if you have it loose enough to move, then it's going to wobble slightly. And that's not great for precision engineering, really, considering how fine some of the other controls are on it. Speaking of the vertical movement, this drill only has three and a half centimetres of up and down movement. So if you're using it for drilling, you can only drill a three and a half centimetre deep hole, which is very limited, I would say. Um, of course, you can move up and down more with the, the handle on the top, but if you're drilling a hole, frantically turning this handle at the back to um, get the vertical movement, I don't think that's going to be very practical and probably not very safe. Your, your stomach will probably get drilled in the process, depending on what size of stomach you have, of course. The gear changing mechanism is awkward. I mean, it's, it's done with a dial and cogs. It's, it's not, you don't have to take the top off and move belts around. So there is that to be said for it. But you have to jiggle the chuck around and jiggle the gear changing knob and then it kind of eventually changes gear. But it doesn't feel like very positive. You're not really totally sure when it's properly clipped in position. So I wasn't that impressed with that. There's a thing called micro adjust on the vertical movement as well which is this dial here. And there's a knob which you pull in for micro adjust and presumably you push in for sort of greater movement. But um, you can see here, I'm turning around the knob. This little sticking out knob is also rotating very slowly, but the actual vertical movement, nothing is moving at all. You know, I've been sitting here turning this for quite a while. Nothing's moved at all. So this seems to be actually disengaged. It's not a micro adjust, it's just disengaged. I've discovered if I actually jiggle the up and down crank around and this micro adjust knob, eventually I can get it to engage. And then it's anything but micro, considering the X and Y movement, they're quite small. This is just really coarse movement. And unless I'm really missing something or something's broken, there isn't a micro adjustment for up and down. And when you're milling, you need micro adjustment for up and down. You need to be able to you know, mill out a tenth of a millimetre. But this is very crude, I think, so I'm not impressed with that. The X and Y dials, like I said, are quite fine. And there's an adjustable scale collar, which you can move to set your home position to zero. And that's quite good. But anyone who uses a milling machine will know about backlash, where the thread doesn't entirely line up. So once you start turning forwards and then turning backwards again, there'll be some movement before the teeth engage again. This has quite a lot of backlash. I don't know if that's normal for milling machines. It seems more than you might expect. I don't know. It seems more than necessary anyway. 
There is a way of locking the X and the Y movements, but it seems to be this very small Allen bolt, which I guess you'd have to tighten up with an Allen key to stop the X movement while you're doing Y movement and vice versa. There's not a nice proper lever. Same goes for the up and down movement. All, all you've got is that Allen bolt, which I mentioned earlier. One good thing about this, which you probably wouldn't find on most pillar drills, is a tilt. So you can drill holes at whatever angle you like. Um, you have to undo four Allen bolts on the back of the machine and then tilt the whole unit over. There's a scale showing how many degrees you've tilted. But when you want to go back to the upright position, there's not any kind of locking. You just have to line it up with the zero and hope you've got it straight. So again, for a milling machine, which you'd expect to be a precision machine, that's a bit of an oversight, I think. One good thing I liked about it is there's a safety cutoff. If you turn on the mains with the drill engaged, you'd expect most drills to start spinning, which is dangerous, particularly if you've left the chuck key in as well, that would go flying across the workshop. But this one, a yellow light lights up saying fault, and it won't start again, I think until you've switched off the forward or back control and switched the RPM to zero, possibly even switched it off at the mains as well, and then switch it on again and start off in a sensible way. So that's quite good having that safety feature. That safety feature also comes up if you're trying to drill something that's too much for it. This drill is very underpowered. Considering how much it costs, they could have put a more powerful motor in. It's got a 150 watt motor, which is a lot less than most hand drills. And if you try drilling a big hole through a piece of wood, it's just gonna grind to a halt. That fault light will come on and it'll stop and you'll have to switch it off, switch it on again, start going again. Which is good having that as a safety feature so it won't burn out the motor, but it can't cost much to add a more powerful motor. Maybe adding a more powerful motor would require higher quality cogs and higher quality everything, I, I don't know. But for a milling machine to be a mere 150 watts and something that will work as a pillar drill to be 150 watts seems a, quite a major oversight to me. Since this is a milling machine, it has everything you need to remove the chuck and put in a collet for proper milling bits. I do wonder whether having proper milling bits in a collet is actually necessary considering how inaccurate some of the other parts of it might be. It seems a bit of a mismatch. One thing to watch out for, even though the bolt at the top of the, the spindle has a safety cover, plastic safety cover, because obviously this part spins around all the time the drill spins. This is just a push fit and it could easily be knocked off or even just fall off with vibration. So I'd expect this to be screwed on rather than just a push fit. In conclusion though, I'd say this makes a nice accurate pillar drill, apart from that lack of height for adjustment and the lack of power. But having a quite accurate control on the XY movement means you can drill holes in exactly the place you want them and line them up in X or Y direction. I wouldn't discount this bit of equipment entirely, but for around £500 it's worth looking around at what, what other options there are. Maybe you could get a pillar drill and a vice with a, an XY movement and accurate controls on that. That might put you in better stead than this bit of equipment. Let me know your opinions on the SX1 in the comments. Um, if you want to see more reviews and more of my other creative videos, do subscribe, like the video, share them, whatever, and enjoy your milling and drilling, whatever machine you choose to buy. Thanks for watching.